All right, everybody. Hello, this is the Kubernetes SIG Architecture Enhancement Cell Project meeting for September 1st, 2020. Um, and uh, okay, let's get started. So, um, agenda. Uh, da -da -da. Here we go. Um, all right, uh, updates on kept control, as I would call it. Um, so I have some updates. I, I did submit a couple of PRs, which got merged, it looked like. One of them, though, I had questions. I wasn't sure if we should merge it. Um, the, the, oh, no, one of them needs, I think one of them still has a conflict I need to resolve. I don't remember if I fixed it or not. Um, but anyway, I just added PRR approver as something we can filter out in the query. And I added the ability to search across multiple SIGs. So in order to do that latter one, I had to pull the SIGs the, the validation module in, which has load SIGs from the net from the net. So that means that you can no longer run it at all unless because it's done in the init unless you have internet connectivity. So that was the one I wasn't sure about we should merge. Um, uh, uh, I guess if people have any thoughts on that, we can fix that. Did did we merge it? Um, would you mind actually um, popping open the uh, the repo? And we can go through oh, some things that are tagged. Yeah, I thought it was still outstanding. I think that because I didn't put a hold on it and then somebody LGTM'd it, it just merged. Uh, that happened. Um, too much power. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have the power. It's okay. we, we can fix it in post. Yeah. I'm getting it up here. Yeah, I think I think it's PR one nine five seven. You mind uh, linking that? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So how do I switch to this? I have I have a few questions about this, but I'll hold off until we hear from everyone else. Okay, here we go. Uh, chunky, chunky okay. list. Yeah. Status, what is this? What is the, what is the, the um, is it status merged or what is it for? Uh, it would be um, closed. is closed, is closed. Is the, author is used. the first. Yeah. Is the first PR on this closed list? Can you do it on Yeah, yeah, you got, yeah. So just hit the closed <laughs> list, yeah. Yeah, that works too. Uh, okay, this is the one, yeah. So this one was fine. This was not much, but then this one. Uh, this was my concern. Um, hmm. Um, so I, I would probably, I would not pull it out and I'd work local because if a SIG, you know, retires or is, you know, archived, uh, there are still things that could potentially be in there. So, so I think that we need a map of current SIGs, right? If we just have a listing of what the current SIGs are, that kind of solves the problem, right? Assuming that you're building locally. Um, assuming that your local is up to date, then it should not be an issue, right? Yeah, all the Bob saying we should keep her, her historical SIGs in there, which is probably true too, right? So, yeah. Um, so, okay, so that's fine. I can just grab. Um, so, smells like a struct, right? So, status, uh, status active, status retired, yada, yada, yada. I yeah. Do we keep that? We don't keep that in siglist.yaml, the, the retired SIGs? No, nope. when, uh, when a SIG or working group whatever is removed, their entries are removed from there and all their stuff is moved to the archive directory. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we don't do it that often, so I, it's just like this means another place we have to keep something up to date. That's all. Um, but whatever. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, I think okay. un until we solve like syncing owners or syncing SIGs across 
across like the project or across orgs will continue running into kind of yeah duplicated data um but but yeah it, it's it's updated infrequently enough that i don't think we need to care right. too much about that yeah exactly yeah okay um that's fine then so we can we just have a to do on that i guess um only i can switch to share this window, i guess so question for you john um have you seen people using this i have no idea but i want to use it um <laughs> <laughs> so, so in the prr group so which is right now just me and david eads and Wojciech, we have this issue of trying to figure out whether we need to do you know whether we have reviews open for prr approval and uh so this was we have this in the cap dot yaml and this was a way to be able to figure out whether we have that or not um you know uh, in other as a sort of you know we don't currently have something that say applies a label like we do for API review, right? But we have this data in the cap.yaml. So this is kind of the mechanism I'm using right now. My question was uh, really just this, that there's a doc of notes from a while back from Bob and Jeremy about um, just how the tool would work. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm wondering if we could somehow construct a project, a project roadmap for for what we would like this thing to do and what the next goals might be. Uh, I started to, doing, to do some of that work and I created a bunch of text and it's really long right now and it shouldn't be. Um, but I had been spitballing user stories to try to imagine where the project would go. But I really need all of you to do that because it's your baby, so. Yeah, I agree and uh, yeah. I mean, I know I jumped ahead a little bit here but this was like not very much work. <laughs> And, and and I wanted it, so I just went ahead and did it. But really, you're right. We should we should actually go and um, come up with a plan. That yeah. Would be, well, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, that's how a lot of things start off, right? We, <laughs> we, yeah, exactly. We hack on something totally a little fine. bit, and then we and then we uh, you know tighten it up later. So I think that's that's fine. I I think what I would want to see is the let's lay out what the roadmap looks like overall. Um, mm -hmm. because again, going back to like the, I, I think those mentioned in the, the July 7th meeting while I was kind of like just postulating about all of the possibilities, um, it's people process tools, right? So I think we need to, um, make sure that the process that we, we want, like the tool serves the process that we want, right? Um, so we have some, you know, KEPs are considered to be in quote unquote beta, uh, right now, and um, we should look at, you know, what does our, you know, V2 beta one look like, or what does our moving to GA for CAPS mean, right? Um, so one of the things that I'd mentioned was the uh, receipts process, right? Um, and I don't know if we have time for it this cycle, um, but it's something that we could try for. Uh, the idea being that people would submit receipts about the, uh, their intentions for the cycle, right? Um, so that becomes a way of, um, helping the enhancement sub team for, uh, the release team, uh, kind of divest of having to do the cat herding, um, which is a big portion of their, uh, their day-to-day -day, having to figure out what statuses certain things are in. Um, if a SIG has committed to the work, uh, then it is in the form of a receipt, right? It could be in the form of a receipt and that way um, we can apply automation to that, right? We have, we have something come in, scrape the receipts and say, hey, this is what is planned for the cycle, right? And it's, it's no, is it in, is it out? We have to update the spreadsheet, this is at risk. Da, 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 right um, there's there's quite a bit of back and forth and and I think that you know we have a bunch of 
uh, you know, including myself, uh, former enhancement leads on the call where I would say that's one of the hardest things to do. Just keep track of where something's at across yeah. hundreds of, of, of issues. Um, at, while, you know, while also being um, kind to the fact that people are, are trying to execute on uh, the enhancement delivery as well as keep us apprised. Um, so if we can remove that barrier, I think that um, that would be a huge step. Um, even yeah, ahead so, of, yeah. Mm -hmm. So just just to clarify your earlier comment with regard to like the cycle, you're not talking about like implementing and asking people to submit the receipt and everything. This cycle, it's get the get it prepped for like 121. Yeah, yeah. I think it's tight okay. to try to do it for this cycle. We it would have yeah. to be working on this and one I, mean, I just wanted to make I sure think, yeah i mean i think where we're going with this is that we don't really have a roadmap yet and so we don't really know what the 120 delivery goals would be for this so before we would project you know majorly ambitious parts of this project we we'd want to know what what we could actually do so i don't think there's any pressure in delivering any specific aspect of it and um, and over and overall, I, I find this is potentially like it's a smaller change in process that I think has a huge net benefit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it would be hard to implement, but given that we're in between the cycle boundaries, I would have wanted to give more notice before trying to. Yeah. So, yeah, let's try to do that for 121. So, we have a bunch of user feedback, you know, the user group I'm talking about, meaning the enhancements sub team from 119. So when we were doing those prioritization breakouts and if you weren't, you know, um, we did about five or six uh, prioritization breakouts with all the members of the team on, on the backlog of items for the release team and what was highest importance and lowest importance. There was a lot of interest in this tool, but there was also a lot of uh, ambiguity around how people they, they, they'd heard of a tool, but they weren't sure what the tool was or if it existed already what the tool's ultimate goals or span of goals might be in terms of helping that process along. So the fortunate thing is I think there is a very clearly, fairly clear um, vision for this. We just need to write it down. And then we would need to communicate it because if we're gonna have some part of it ready for 120, then it seems like the enhancements team really would like and benefit from this, so. They just need so, to know what's available so, and what's coming. Yeah, so it would so, be great. Oh, sorry, I was no, just no, gonna say it, 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 it'd be great if there were some tool, some 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 process we had to to, to document enhancements and, and you know communicate them to people. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so uh, yeah, you know, like I think we need to write a cap about this, and it'll have goals, it'll have non-goals, it'll define the scope. In, in the user stories and, and then let people comment on it and let's just try and move it forward. So, so I think, so, yeah, I mean, we had 617. And so that was, so I think the initial kickoff umbrella, like we wanna have some sort of tooling and there are six sub themes or goals within that. And so I think what we wanted and we talked about doing was just like taking a look at that again and what's already been written and then just updating it. And then, so you already have work done and we just need to refresh it and, what are so, the next goals? Yeah, so I, that's, yeah, Laurie took the words out of my mouth. Um, the, what John is looking for is a meta cap about caps and 617 is that. That's exactly why, that is exactly why we, we wrote it up. Um, so I think it sounds like the work for 120 is to refresh uh, 617 primarily. Yep. Um, the, to, to go to the tool, the tool is not useful to end users, um, to, to Paris's comments and, and Zoom. The tool is not useful to end users. What would be useful to end users is this receipt system. Right? Having, because if the receipts in, in the same way that we do uh, release notes and release notes has relnotes.cates.io, um, having those receipts would allow us uh, to have um, metadata about what is in uh, the current cycle. 
or what's in an upcoming cycle. And, it, and it's the same with the, the part of the reason that we added new fields in the structs for um, for the uh, the kept metadata, right? So the, the proposed, the milestone, all of that information, yeah. right? The idea is to eventually scrape that information and turn it into a website, right? That I think will be useful to-, to Yeah. I mean, you have different users here, right? And so it's sort of like, what, who are the users that we need to satisfy first? I mean, you want to satisfy all of them, right? But finishing part of the job for a specific set of users to then be able to help those other users would be a good idea. So getting the part for the release team, I think, really solid and getting that team to be able to use this tool. And then making sure that the other types of users will benefit, you know, that they're not like um, siloed, that the goals aren't siloed, but are building like a, like a story in a book. You know, you have chapters and you finish first chapter, then you move to the second. So, and you so have yeah. yeah, so what's um, important to me is, especially as, um, you know, you know all, all of the sub project owners have multiple hats, right? Um, right, so, you know, Bob has focuses in, in contributor experience. Jeremy is taking on 120 uh, as the release team lead. John is a SIG architecture lead. Um, I had mentioned this in my previous meeting, but like we want to do less stuff, right? So, <laughs> um, so being able to activate the, um, I think that's so. one of my, um, one of my pieces of feedback for the release team in general is that uh, a lot of the tasks that we tend to work on in the release team sub project are documented and sometimes reactive as opposed to proactive, right? Um, so I would love to be able to shed some of that work, toss it to the enhancement sub team for the release team and have them uh, also work on some of those proact uh, proactive activities um, as opposed to uh, you know, as, a, as opposed to trying to serve all these users simultaneously, right? We build a bigger squad um, and then we all go forth uh, for the, the end users and, and the other people looking at caps. So would you be up for having me help you just roadmap? Like, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just going to facilitate the right. conversation to help you structure your plans and then figure out how to please the users one I mean, if group at a time. If you want to tell us what to do too, that's cool. <laughs> I'm happy to, but you're the experts. Like you have been around a little bit longer and know the actual pain where I just can only try to empathize. But. Well, I, I think that will be useful. I think though that the next step is like, we need to pick somebody on this call to sit down and revamp the cap and write down, revise the goals, um, take the things from the doc you put together, Lori, and um, and and put that in. You know, move those user stories into the cap, um, and then you know, I think it, it maybe simultaneously we can have that yeah. conversation. About I think that's. Rhythm. I don't really understand this thing. I'm just going to be very right. clear. Like, I don't actually understand what this does yet, and um, I've looked at the docs, and I don't get it. So it, it I will need you to help yet. me do that. <laughs> So, so I think that, yeah, it's come down to like, what are the major groups of users we're trying to serve? Like, what is mm -hmm. our first goal? And our first goal, eliminate the enhancement sub team um, of the release team, eliminate the spreadsheet, right? And mm -hmm. allow, give that team tooling to do everything they do. Or yeah. is it, um, you know, address discoverability of caps for other people or the receipt system? Like, what goals, no. what users do that serve? Yeah, so uh, I know Nabrun you has volunteered to help uh, with fleshing out the cap. Yeah, so I know that you want to get rid of the spreadsheet, but like in terms of like technically what this thing is doing right now or capable of doing right now, and then how it does it. So, you know, so that you can actually build on this tool to start serving Paris's needs and other people's needs as you go along. So that's what I would like to see. Like, how does this thing work? Um, that's not clear to me right now. And so if we, if we have that conversation together uh, in a small group, so Nabro and you, Bob, uh, Jeremy, we can figure that out quite quite quickly, I think. It's all written down, it just needs to be tweaked. And then so, I think you have your users and that needs to be kind of structured in a flow. So like, what are your next immediate goals for this thing? What are the, you know, the increments of value? And then, and then we have to figure out like who actually does the work because uh, 
you know, just that, that maybe that's answered, but just like how, how could we even have other people help out? Because it seems like the two of you are basically do, doing most of the work. Is it possible to get contributors to support that? I don't know. Right. So the, the contributors that would be in the best place to help out with that are people who have been on the enhancement sub team or are currently on the enhancement sub team. Yep. Um, so the when you say this thing, are we talking about the tool? Or are we talking about KEPS? Are we talking about enhancement sub project overall? Right now, I'm talking specifically about the tool. The tool okay. is so part of a broader cat because- Let's uh, forget the tool for a second. Okay. Um, I say that to say we're, right now we have built a tool for a very specific purpose um, that does not serve as many people as we would want. Uh, like, we are not, like, I don't think we're going to get to the place where we build a tool that serves everyone. Right. Okay. The what we need to do is build a process that can serve everyone. Right. Okay. And we have some of the skeleton for that process in place. We've been running with it. So I think that the so we have a the ability to get a reasonable amount of feedback from people about this process. And we do have some of that already. Um, mm -hmm. There is an issue opened um, that says like iterate over kept feedback or something. Right. Um, that. I opened when we were doing the second iteration of like the meta cap, right? Mm -hmm. um, that one has some really good questions to tease out of okay. and, and update. Um, the, I think tweaking the process will get us a better idea of what users want mm -hmm. and bring us to a place where we could build a tool, multiple tools. Um, the cap query tool, uh, is the kept CTL right now is only kind of useful for a reviewer, a PRR reviewer, uh, uh, someone who is glancing at, you know, someone who needs to glance at the repo for specific okay. content, right? Okay. Um, so is future what... development planned on it though? And if so, which parts of the process is that development mainly geared towards serving? That would be my question. Internal contributors, mm -hmm. reviewers, approvers, kept, yeah. kept authors, okay. right? That's, but this that's, specific yeah. tool. For that specific tool, right? Kept, kept cuddle. Yep. yep. Okay. So then that there is development that's planned for the future. And so then I think we're talking about the same thing. We're basically saying this tool is meant to serve the process. We have the tool itself and development. And then we have the process and we want to revise that to update it but everything does talk to each other in the end. So how, you know, we have a delivery path on this tool itself, and then we have the process. So do you want the two to run in parallel to have the tool serve the optimizations for the process? I do you... don't believe the optimizations of the process can be served by the tool immediately. Um, I think that an optimization for this process, and this is why I go back to the release team, the first part of the cycle is enhancements collection, right? So removing the bottleneck in, at enhancements collection time is mm -hmm. going to best serve the process. That's going to free people up to do other stuff, whether it's work on the tool or build user stories for... Okay, but that's, pro that's purely process, right? That's not kept cuddle in any way at the moment. Well, I, I think to improving that the collection process is actually sort of dependent on the receipt process that we're, we're talking about with the tool. So, okay. the so well, the receipt process wasn't necessarily, uh, doesn't necessarily need to be part of the tool. So here's where we have to align on the vision for this tool and what it would well, do. So. I mean, I think the first thing we just we just need a document, but and maybe it's already there, and I just don't remember. I know there was discussion of it. I don't remember if it's written down, but we have a document what the receipts process looks like, and then we'll see is the tool useful or is it simply something something people can do um, with PRs manually for now, um, or or if we're talking about one twenty one anyway, maybe we define the receipts process and we see if the tool is useful and we build it for that. But like I, I think. Definitely, yes. Process has to come first, and then the tool just fills in the gaps. So let's uh, let's just start by updating the cap to define what that process is and come to agreement on the process, and then we can punch in the tool where 
where it serves that process. Yeah, that, that seems to make sense to me. Like you want outcomes, you want certain users to have a better experience. So recreate, recreating that vision yeah. and then whether the tool serves that step or improvement or not is the secondary question. Yeah, I don't know whether it's a different tool or it's different aspects of the same tool. Like there may be things like, like this little PR that I did that it's just particularly useful for me it's not even part of that process. It's a different process that the tool is serving, and, and we just have to not necessarily no. kill those things. But like, I think that for this team, the important part is is getting the process right and then filling in the gaps with the tool. Okay. So I think then to messaging, like thinking about messaging, what the 120 enhancements team can expect would just be something we would keep in mind. So like when they when they start getting to work, like what yeah. What can they expect us, this group, to be doing on their behalf? So I would, I would expect, the, uh, again, we, uh, given this stage, we don't want to introduce any, uh, any weird changes for the enhancements team moving into one. Yeah. So I would, I would say to the enhancements uh, team that it's business as usual, right? Anything that's in already documented in the uh, the enhancements handbook is what you should follow. Um, this tool, this tool process updates, all that stuff will come in, in a parallel track. Um, the, so it, it sounds like, it sounds like I need to define the receipts process. Um, and um, I would request, uh, who is the lead for, uh, uh, Kirsten. Kirsten, yeah. Yep. Um, so, uh, Nabarin, can you work with uh, Kirsten um, to discuss some potential improvements? Um, I know that Lori, y'all have had some chats about this already. Um, I mean, a lot of it came in those prioritization sessions, and Kirsten was pretty vocal in, in those about the enhancements process and what could be optimized. And I have the item actually on the agenda here. Um, these recently prioritized items. There's a okay. there's a bunch of information there, okay. and then what we um, could do is actually message that hey, we really want your feedback because there is this thing happening. So, really, please be vocal about how this can be better. We want to you know you're our users. Yeah. So let's go into that next. Um, before we do though, uh, Paris, you're chatting a bunch on the chat, but it is not recorded. Um, Paris, would you like to give some feedback about the tool expectations as an end user? Hey, miss y'all. Um, yeah, no, I actually was talking to Dims recently and I told Dims that it would be so cool if I could have a tool. I mean, I've said this before in the past, but um, it would be so cool if I could have a tool uh, instead of digging through the repo to find out every, like, every single cap, uh, like if I wanted to, and then ultimately query things like its status uh, and other details. And then that's when he said, oh, well, I look at this cool kept CTL thing, saw a screenshot of it, and I was like, that's it. Uh, <laughs> I was like, that's it. If I could get that on like a static site and like refresh every six hours, I've, I'm like, yeah. Uh, so, okay, so presentation mechanism wise, it sounds like site is best for you? Not necessarily uh, the tool, but yeah, static. like a, yeah, yeah, like ultimately, like I mean, ultimately, like my first thought was, oh, let me go to dev stats, and I was like, let me, I was like, yeah, I know, trust me, I know, I, <laughs> I, 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 like, trust me, of all people here, I know, I understand what you're thinking, so, but no, as an end, I'm at an end user, and end users are like, oh. Like, what features are coming up? What features are this? What features are that? What's this? And it's like, oh, let me go to a dev stats, right? Let me go to a dev stats. That's totally, yeah, let, note my quotes. <laughs> uh, and like, let me query the repo and do a bunch of things that like I could figure that out. And it's like, no, we don't really have that. And it's like, yeah, well, we have like the release team has the spreadsheet. Um, and then, so like, obviously keeping my own spreadsheets and then all of a sudden it's like spreadsheets and uh, yeah. And then it's like just so much work 
trying to like maintain everybody and keep everybody in the loop of what the hell is coming. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I sort of see this as like, if you have to generalize all end users, it's sort of like who would be a product manager or a product executive speaking on behalf of a body of work and where, where that work is in its development stage. And so whether you're on the enhancements team or you're on the steering committee, you're going to want a benefit from having the same set of information readily available. And so that's kind of like the meta goal as I see it for this kind of work and this process or the tool. Um, and then yeah. maybe, you know, the tool or we have different tools, but it sounds like you need roughly the same tool as like so, checking so the we, status. It yeah, to me, might perform the, different the, functions. The, the website and all that's sort of like the end goal. Yeah. So the, it's, it's not a tool, right? Forget. So again, forget the tool for a second, right? What we want is the data how we massage oh, yeah. the data how we present the data can right. be so it's going to mean different things to different people maybe kept ctl is useful for people who actually need to author review approve kept mm -hmm. uh, this website is going to be super useful for end users or maybe someone who doesn't need to care about kept or doesn't want to care about kept and only cares about like what's happening this cycle why is it happening is it something being deprecated? Is it something that's going to mean that I have to upgrade my cluster, downgrade my cluster, disappear my clusters, right? Like that's that's the question that an end user wants to answer, right? Yeah, well, I think we're saying the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's a tool I'm, I'm or a mechanism, saying, but it's yeah, just a I'm just saying, of data and how I'm we do just, that. Yeah, I'm just saying that the the metadata is what we want, right? And and that's that was the first thing that we we went after. Um, so I think we have I think we have most of the fields that we want. To massage um, at this point. Um, so, yeah, the however we however we do it, um, website tool, both. Um, the the website as an end goal is nice, but I think I think that the website as a sooner goal is easier to execute on. Um, easier only because we kind of have a framework for it uh, with the rel notes site. Um, Bob, I will, I will reserve more speaking for like, I, I think you have been closer to rel notes than I have. Um, yeah. So the, the big thing, if all you want to serve up is like the kept name linked to it and its status, that isn't a big deal. Cause you can like get the one JSON blob, um, where I think if we want to present and be able to filter out more information, um, we really need to lock down the schema. And then, like, th this is sort of like the first action items. Um, and then go through and update all the caps. Like, convert them to the new format and get them in, like, if, if we can achieve that under, like, 1.20, like, th that sets things up for, you know, many better things down the line. So, so this is something that I see as a task that we could totally have the the enhancement sub team help out with right yeah. um the yeah pruning pruning the data because we've done some of it right at least with incoming caps but yep the the other thing like it's honestly it's a great opportunity for if sigs want to onboard people into like you know new people this is a great task to start with especially if they want to get a little bit more familiar with that specific you know cap or thing that it's touching um if we want to like try and have them like updated a little bit more too because a lot of the the keps are missing sort of the final implementation history so that, that's we, a potentially a separate item but so so we have some validation within pre-submit right to ensure that certain content is there um i think that do we want to ratchet that up to be a little bit more strict um, in a maybe non-blocking way. I, am... I mean, I think that's a separate, well, we can't ratchet it up in a blocking way if we're gonna be converting old caps because some, some data simply won't be available. So I'm not sure, what does it look like to ratchet up the validations in a non-blocking way? How, how do you inform without blocking uh, duplicate job running in a strict 
flag or something, right? That spits out the warnings as opposed to um, uh, spits out. Yeah, spits out the warnings or, or outright fails, right? With, with yeah. bad metadata, right? And then we do something the same as you know the uh, um, the lints that we skip on Kubernetes, Kubernetes, right? Yeah. Okay. And then at, 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 that way we can provide a list to whoever is going to be working on this, and they can knock them out. So going back to the cap revision, I would say we could do that in an hour if we keep it to the high level goals and don't get into details. Um, like you can get into details, but maybe not in that meeting because otherwise I don't think we would finish. Um, but if we can gain the, uh, create the overall vision for this, I think it would just take an hour. Define an hour, like just to. Mm -hmm. So sure. So here's how I would structure this. Like um, we have an existing cut. So we come in with that updated. We can do that asynchronously. And we try to prepare ourselves as much as we can beforehand for like what we would actually like this process. What are the main outcomes we're looking for with this process now? And then we can get alignment on what those outcomes might be and talk about what, is, what are the things that we would work on now versus later because they're most urgent or readiest. And then we can fill in the details, but I would, I would really like to make sure that we get the overall picture at the end of that meeting, because we can always put details in later. Okay. And then maybe we have owners that will take parts of those, take some of those outcomes because, you know, they're working with different end users more closely or they're, you know, in the enhancements team, whatever. Um, but we, we would have that achieved in that, in that hour long session. And then we would also have a way to message the outcome to the stakeholders. So that's a couple of things. The messaging part is easy. Basically, like we have these outcomes, we all signed off on them. Here's what we do now. Um, but it's just getting alignment on the outcomes and how we want to achieve them. And then if there's time, the details can follow. Gotcha. Um, yeah, that's, that's fine. We can do that for the next meeting when we can think about it cool. until then. Um, do you want to put that up for topics for the next one? Yeah, and then maybe if Nabrun's willing to help structure the, the doc, the template for that conversation, that would be cool. And sure. everybody else can help, but if the two of us can co-author that together, then we can have it for you. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. You pause. Is there a concern or? I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, thought is gone. That's absolutely gone. Tuesday feels like a Monday right now. I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, I just have back to back meetings today. <laughs> Um, ooh, all right, so yeah, I'm gonna do more thinking about the receipt system because this is uh carryover from what I was thinking of, like this carryover as like Caleb's baby. Um, so there are some thoughts already kind of strewn across the repo, I guess we need to drag them together. There are a bunch of issues opened around uh. 617 as well yes um, that are probably in various states of staleness um yes so that is a good opportunity to define owners since the issues already exist as well um yeah can we make receipts like an outcome we could just note it here so that we just have that part because that sounds like that's a cornerstone yeah. of this whole plan yeah, I, I think the yeah the outcome there is a uh, clear understanding of what is in a, a milestone, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I guess it's that point here. Process has to come first. Tool filling gaps, and then that's an, actually another point. Let's first focus on updating cap to define receipt process, and then your point about milestones would follow from that. 
Cool, cool. Should we get into the um, the prior prioritized items? I mean, that is piggybacking off of this whole topic. Uh, It's just kind of the details. We've been talking around. Is that, is that, is that what we're talking about? We were talking about in the next meeting, or do we have? Yeah, I'm is thinking it might. Time? Yeah, I'm thinking it might just make sense to actually just structure that data around the conversation that we'll we'll have. Okay. So what what's this one here? So that is actually relating to. So SigNode has taken a look at their caps and. Um, yeah, it's a request access doc, but I can share a screenshot if you can't access it. But they ran through their um, caps and they just basically said, okay, here's what we're going to push. Here's what we are not going to push. It's kind of like high level triaging. And so then uh, in the chairs and leads channel, I posted it and then Jordan Liggett and others, Bob as well, weighed in and said, hey, you know, this might be good for helping clarify goals around what caps a SIG wants to push forward or not. Um, and it's a good Perfect. like taking Sorry. the temperature, um, like catching up with past items. So you're saying this could be a best practice we ask other things today that looks like it could be useful, is that what you're saying? Or, or, yeah, um, it's a way to I, kind of create the whole, the whole getting into a release cycle more sustainable. And I've been doing some outreach just to float this idea to various SIGs and I've been I've been documenting my progress on those conversations. So, so this, I, sorry, go for it, John. Oh, I, I, I was just going to say this might feed into that receipts process, right? Like, I don't know the receipts process in detail, but I wonder it's a, it's a, it's a way to signal intent, right? So, um, you know, that would seem to be a similar thing. But anyway, go on what you're going to yeah. say. So, so yeah, what I am a little hesitant going down this path. Um, I think that there are a lot of uh, instances where it's clear that a SIG needs to do triage and the triage ends up in a perfect example is, is the bug triage sub team on the release team, right? Where um, issue and PR triage is happening there sometimes when it should be in a SIG's hands. Um, I think that caps are part of your delivery for the, the cycle. Um, as well as the, you know, as well as the actual code process content as a result of, of those caps. Um, so I think that should fold into your triage process. I don't believe that triage is something that we should appear to be handling for people. Oh, and that if there's no intent. Sure yeah, yeah no, sure no. It's like, you all do this. You do this. Yeah, <laughs> it's giving it's them a clear stuff. message. It's their it's own health check. Right. Um, one of the giving things, them, sorry, go for it. Process. Sorry, giving them a sort of prescriptive process for how, how they would go about doing yeah. it. So. The, the tool, like the, the, you know, receipt system and all that might help, you know, in the future, but this is a good, like, thing that they should, like, most things should do right now just as a way to get an idea of what, what they are doing themselves. Um, one thing that ha like I have personally noticed in the past, I'll, uh, quite a few SIGs don't necessarily know everything that's going on with within their own sort of like enhancements of tracking. There's there's potentially too many people in, in milestone maintainers to sign off on some of this stuff, um, and so it it sort of serves as just as a good way to to keep tabs on on everything that's going on. So Doing a little have, bit of discovery. Yeah, so we have, it's it's a problem of too few and too many simultaneously, right? For having multiple milestone, main, the, the point of the milestone maintainers group is to maintain the milestone. Um, and, and primarily we mean that in a very, uh, a very GitHub centric manner, right? Actually being able to apply the milestone label, right? But what goes into the milestone, um, we've previously had a, uh, there is a features, I think there's a features approvers, owners list within yeah. Kubernetes Kubernetes. There was a features maintainers, uh, GitHub team, a various teams that um, 
were kind of coalesced around the idea of like maintaining your caps or maintaining your things for the milestone. Um, I don't think that, I believe that we have too few milestone maintainers, um, which is leading to instances where, and we had talked about this a little bit on the SIG, uh, the release engineering meeting just now, um, but there need to be more people who understand what it means to be a milestone maintainer. Milestone maintainers do not need to be just chairs and technical leads for SIGs. They can be potentially anyone in the SIG who knows how to to kind of get a pulse on what's happening for the milestone and is willing to take on that duty, right? Um, I, I think, you know, in the opening the 120 milestone work that I've been doing, um, I've seen PRs come by for people updating their milestone maintainers, but it was primarily to update stale milestone maintainers for the chairs and technical leads, not add new non-share technical lead milestone maintainers. I would personally like to see more of that. Um, the, cause that goes into, that then goes into issue and PR triage work for Kubernetes, Kubernetes. If they're doing less of that, they have more time to look at the KEPs. Yeah, this, the, the one thing was just keeping everyone on the same page is the big problem for of sure. what's, for sure. what's going on. Um. Yes, Paris. Um, that would be a good idea. <laughs> uh, so the idea for the recording um, is, can we have this topic as a topic for the next chairs meeting? Um, and I think that's super important. I think the a lot of the chair meetings, um, for those who are not in attendance, um, are have been geared around um, triage. Right, how people are doing triage, what's a, what's been, uh, what has and hasn't been effective. I, I do think that Keps land right in that bucket. Um, I just, I sorry to be so vehement earlier. Like I was, I just want to be very clear that we're not taking on triage for anyone. Oh um, no, no. We can, we can. And, uh, and don't worry, a hundred percent of my messages have been like, we're not doing that. Like this is your work, so. Um, because it's not sustainable otherwise, and it won't really build the kind of ecosystem that we need to have where everybody's doing this kind of work and running their own process. Um, so it, just to clarify, is the idea for the chairs meeting this health check or just the whole topic of CAPS being, uh, with the health check being, you know, a tactical tool that SIGs could consider using? So I think very concretely, at, at least one of the topics should be what does a milestone maintainer do? Right. Do you know? Mm -hmm. Is the definition today wrong? Mm -hmm. What is the definition today? Right. right. Like um, having that conversation because I think that you know we we're going to have that discussion as well in the next SIG release meeting, um, and expand, contract, make wide more widely known the definition of milestone maintainer. Um, in several email, I think it's it, it's partially an outreach thing, but it's also a execution post outreach, right? Um, there have been several calls to update your milestone maintainers, update your reviewers and approvers. Um, whether or not it happens is a different story. Well, even just my outreach on this health check, I'm running into some kind of like, we don't see the connection between triaging and this health check. like. Where is it? And I'm like, hmm, that's interesting mm. because to me, it's very clear. Your feature health check is basically your big ticket triage party. And then yeah. your bugs is your small ticket, smaller ticket one. Um, but there's still, it's not intuitive for all people. So I think helping them along is, is useful. And, and I think that's definitely like the putting on the hat of a, uh, of a product team or a product owner, right? Um, there's a different investment and incentives if you're doing this internally, right? The, the goal would be very clear, right? That you would be expected to deliver on kind of roadmap items um, or even understanding what the roadmap is overall, right? So I, I think taking some of that corporate focus and bringing it into the community could be useful. <laughs> Yeah, although it's, it's not in every company. <laughs> <laughs> in an this, ideal world. Let's just write a roadmap and let's just do a bunch of other things. 
It happens. But yeah, absolutely. We would like to see. I mean, it's about helping Caps uh, Sigs rather be successful and and feeling productive and and staying um, connected to their purpose, getting stuff done. Yeah, I think anything that we can do to uh, remove load from our you know our collective chairs, technical aides, sub project owners, yada yada yada, um, is going to be useful because I, I think that. Um, one of the underlying problems for uh, even executing on some of the stuff is not the is not the lack of willingness to execute on it. I think it's the time, right? Yeah, if you're exactly. holding all of the balls. You can't, you know. Well, right. And what I like about the Signode Health Check is that they're basically saying, like, here's a bunch of things that we've said we needed to do, but then let's dig into that. Like, or it's a template for having that kind of conversation, and. You know, I think there is kind of this expectation that we put on ourselves, like, all right, you know, this issue exists now, these things exist, we have to do them. And it's like, you kind of don't, but know why you don't need to do them. Just document that for yourselves and then yeah. do fewer things that are higher impact. Yeah, and I think, you know, dovetailing, I don't know if I, since I can't see the doc, I don't know how it's modeled, but um, dovetailing into uh, steering's requ request for um, annual reports moving into the next year, um, seeing what the annu annual report format looks like, um, everyone taking a look at that and just getting an idea of like, oh, this is, this is a place where, you know, some tool or process that we're thinking of might be helpful, right? getting the steering nod <laughs> from Paris. Okay, well, uh, I think that pretty much covers our agenda. So um, does anybody else have anything they want to discuss in the last five minutes we have here? And we'd be, oh, we're going to do the session at the next meeting. Never mind. That was my only question. Yeah, After we can do it. Yep. Yep. Make sure you yeah, add your. Oh, sorry. I'll just say I don't think it's super urgent. I think it's fine. I was going to say, make sure you add yourself to the attendees if you're here, Paris. I'll add you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All and, right then. Hold, oh, hang yeah. on, sorry. We have a new attendee, maybe new. Uh, I don't know if you want to say anything, Kay Nabin. Nabin. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm just following up uh, the the SIG to see how how it works. Just curious. Here. Sure. Did you have questions? Um, anything specific you're looking to get out of this group? Uh, no, I'm just uh, taking a look in the projects. Very excited to see this uh, cab CTL and stuff. Awesome. Thanks for hanging out with us. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Later, y'all. Bye. Later. <laughs>